Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Lena Vettenland, who is with the Norwegian Helsinki Committee, although she is based in Almaty. Lena, do I have that right? Yes, just for a couple, um, couple of months. Mm -hmm. The pomegranate on your chain tells us that you've been to Armenia. That's, that's correct, yes. Um, you get the Armenia portfolio at the Norwegian uh, Helsinki Committee, is that right? Yes, it's a combination of Central Asia and Armenia, but uh, Armenia is closest to my heart and Central Asia is the biggest program, so to say. Does uh, Central Asia include Azerbaijan or from the Caucasus it's only Armenia? Uh, from Caucasus only Armenia. Central Asia is only the five stands in the, uh, on the other side of the Caspian. Yeah. So does the Norwegian Helsinki Committee do anything in Azerbaijan or Georgia? Uh, actually, we have a program which is covering all the uh, South uh, Caucasus countries. Uh, we have two partner organizations in each of the countries, and uh, we're not aiming at solving any conflicts in this region. Right. This is, of course, way out of our league, but we are encouraging tolerance inside the countries first and then between the countries. So they will develop a coalition for trust, it's called. Good luck with that, as they say, because <laughs> no. that's not only is that missing within our countries, but certainly it's missing between you know, the pairs of us. Um, we want to talk to you, as you know, because the Helsinki, Nor the Norwegian Helsinki Committee um, recently published a report on uh, civil society life in Armenia, the civic space, mm -hmm. and you gave it a very honest title. What did you call it? I called it Between Hope and Distrust. If I can be honest, I also had a working title, and it uh, was called Between the Rock and a Hard Place. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I've been coming frequently to Armenia since 2008. I observed the elections, so-called, in, in February 2008. I was in the center of Yerevan on 1st of March, and uh, I've seen, and I've come back frequently since then, so I've seen the developments, and uh, I really wanted to, to write something about, um, yeah, what, what's happening in, in Armenia, basically, and, and put it out there for more people to see. It's an extensive report. It quotes many civil society names, leaders, organizers, civic activists, and you point to several interesting phenomena that we grapple with all the time here. One of them is the distance between legislation that's not bad and mm -hmm. implementation that's not great. Yeah. Is that fair? Uh, well, I keep... Uh since I also work with Central Asia, I'm often, uh, I often meet the question, like, it's not so bad in Armenia compared to Turkmenistan or compared to Kazakhstan, but that's not the point. Uh, Armenia has done several good uh, reforms, and, and, it, and it looks good, but on the other hand, I think that the authorities can allow this because they know that, as I do write in the report, that uh, the media and the activists are not that much able to use the space that they do actually have. So it's not such of a big uh, problem for the authorities to, to allow it. Talk a little bit more about the media and civil society activists not being able to use the space they actually have. What does that mean? Uh, again, comparing with Central Asia, I face more regulations on civil society activism, more regulations on the media. In Central uh, Asia? In Central Asia, yes. In Armenia, they actually do have this um, uh, availability. I mean, there is no direct censorship. There is possibilities to organize organizations. There is possibilities to meet, basically. I mean, uh, only last weekend, 30 people were arrested downtown Almaty because they were protesting against the devaluation. But in Armenia, I have the sense that there is more of the society is, is limiting how how people can demonstrate and what's, it, what's acceptable to, uh, to say out loud. There are certain fr uh, limits and certain frameworks that, that you should uh, remain uh, in between. And if you go further than that, you face, you don't actually need the repression from the government because you are frowned upon from, from passersby and from the neighbors and from your own relatives. And media will uh, again, there is several outlets and media has the possibility to put things out there, but they don't ask the necessary uh, critical investigative analytical questions. And so it's more of a, as, as I quote uh, Omeg Plus uh, director in, in the report, that it's more of a stenography that you uh, put, uh, the idea is to put as fast as possible what is being said, not analyzing. There is no time for that. Is there 
a similar environment somewhere that we can learn from? Because I think that the players here acknowledge that to some extent, that, that the field perhaps is broader and wider than most people take advantage of. Uh, and as you say, the players in society, in public office, your neighbor, the whole range, don't either demand or encourage the kind of inquisitiveness you are uh, encouraging. Mm. Is there an example of another society that is similarly uh, manipulated and repressed? Uh, not that I am aware of. I mean, uh, I'm comparing actually my Armenia report now to what is happening in Kazakhstan that uh, of course, the the, uh, the area in Kazakhstan is much smaller uh, media and meeting and organization wise, but there is more initiatives uh, as starting. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, they have had a more, uh, they have managed to to press the boundaries a bit. The activists have been uh, in in Kyrgyzstan. They are, it's a very vivid civil society, not only civil society as in the established NGOs, but also. Uh, independent activists using media, using Facebook, using um, um, various uh, various outlets. So there is definitely something to learn from from Kyrgyzstan um, in in many ways. And what is interesting now is that, that I see uh, Armenian activists are reposting things on Facebook that uh, Kyrgyz activists are putting there uh, when they are re reacting to what can happen with the uh, customs union and the and these things. So. They are both poor countries. They are both um, dependent on on Russia in many ways. So, I think uh, Kyrgyzstan could be one way to look. Though uh, it's a very difficult. Though they have more limitations than actually uh, Armenians do have. When uh, when we talk about these kinds of observations that that you're making, uh, is it you talking? to us? Um, do you find that that distrust that you mentioned in the title of the report also affects the players within civil society, the distrust there and therefore the obstacle to uh, further cooperation, collaboration, effectiveness? Yeah, there is, um, uh, as I also quote one, one activist, that uh, she says the problem with Armenia is that there is always some hope, and then this hope is is crushed. And uh, the uh, the Norwegian Helsinki Committee, we have supported several organizations in Armenia over the last years, and um, basically none of them have agreed between themselves on how <laughs> things should be. But that's also why we support various organizations because civil society should uh, have a, a broad representation. There should be different elements working to improve the human rights situation, but using difficult uh, different approaches. Um, but of course, it's not it's not only in Armenia. Uh, it's in Kyrgyzstan. It's in Kazakhstan as well that there is a certain competition between uh, between the more established NGOs. But this is where also the activists play more of an independent and more creative role uh, that they take over this space, which has been um, that the NGOs use of, as a more stable source of income, so to say. But yes, sorry, it's, it's just more of the whole Ar Armenian. Um, Psyche. Sometimes I want to shake Armenians and say, just focus on curing cancer, yeah, one blogger wrote, uh, instead of thinking about uh, what uh, gay couples do in the bedroom or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one more question. You, you, know, you clearly talk to us here in civil society, and yes, we read what you have to say and at least think about it. Do you have channels to the government? Does the government read you, talk to you? Uh, the Armenian government, I haven't m met so much, no. Uh, we are planning to launch, uh, to present this report, of course, to them. Um, the Secretary General of the Norwegian Helsinki Committee will be in Armenia. Uh, he's arriving tomorrow, I think, actually. Um, so there we'll try to, to do have some meetings, but um, uh, unfortunately we don't have this uh, established contact now. Do you have such contact in other countries? Is that part of what you do? Yes, for example, last week in Kyrgyzstan, we had uh, meetings with State Commission on Religion and we had tra training for um, uh, for parliamentarians on freedom of religion or belief. And we had meetings with uh, with other uh, author uh, authorities. So it depends from country to country and how uh, how we work. But so does it is, does it depend on the willingness of the government to be a partner? Where where does the depending come from? 
Um, it depends mostly on uh, on our project and how we uh, how we set it up. So in in Kyrgyzstan, we are working with religious groups to make them understand their rights, but also with the authorities to see where their laws uh, violate um, the rights of the religious groups. Uh, so that's a two two way approach uh, directly in in the in the project that we do have in Armenia. We have been working more directly with the civil society. Uh, and not so much from from the top so far, but the recommendations in the report are definitely for the Armenian authorities as well. Yeah, in Armenia, especially since the legislation is comparatively decent, it really yeah. does require a bottom-up demanding process, doesn't it? It does, yes. Well, thank you for kind of telling us what we already knew, but it is good to hear <laughs> it, to read it, and uh, to recognize that there is not just distrust, but also hope. Yes, there is there is hope, and this is what I want to bring on to the Europeans and to Norway and to others. Don't forget about about Armenia. It's better than other countries, but there is still a lot a lot of things to do. Yeah, that was part of your recommendations, and that was certainly appreciated. The worst thing that could happen to Armenia is that we fall off the European agenda. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Lena Vettenland, who is with the Norwegian Helsinki Committee and the author of a recently issued report on Armenian civil society called Armenia Between Hope and Distrust. Thank you for joining us on CivilNet, Lena. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for following us on CivilNet.